So where does this put Saudi Arabia in terms of the region and its relations with the US, for example, isolation, possibly? Christopher Dickey is foreign editor for the Daily Beast. He joins me now from Paris. You've written extensively in the past when uh, Banda was in Washington about Saudi, about this man. Uh, you've said he was a very accessible uh, uh, man when he was doing the rounds uh, in Washington for all of those years. Was he pushed or did he jump? Oh, I think he was pushed. I think he, he basically had failed in his many missions that he had set for himself. You know, he basically had two objectives as head of intelligence. One was to fight against Iran and undermine Iran's influence in the region. And the other was to undermine the Muslim Brotherhood's uh, role in the region. So it was a complicated deal and it, it didn't work out very well for him. Well, earlier today, Chris, I was having a discussion about the future of this region, and we're in the UAE, of course, here with the show, with a number of uh, experts uh, here. And here's what one of them had to say when I, we were discussing uh, uh, Banda's uh, disappearance from the scene, as it were. I think the days of the hook in Saudi's foreign policy is over. Bandar was the prime hawk over there. I think the moderates are coming in and they are going to set the agenda for the next stage. The moderates are coming in, says Abdullah Abdul Khalek. Um, do you buy that line of thought? Well, yes, I think they're moderate in terms of in comparison with Bandar. Bandar was extremely hawkish mm. on Iran even before he had this efficient official position back in 2006 he was encouraging israel to go into uh, southern lebanon in the war against hezbollah he was out to crush hezbollah and that didn't work out very well either he's one one time and another he's tried to take on iran and he hasn't been very successful in that uh, at the same time in syria the normally the main opposition group to assad particularly before the war got really bad would have been the muslim brotherhood but that was unacceptable yeah. to the Saudis and particularly to Bandar. So he was creating a confused so, situation and then he was blaming the United States for it. So I guess the, the, the final question here, and keep it brief if you will, uh, Chris, uh, you've talked about the significance uh, of the move, the consequences of the move now. How would you describe those going forward outside of Saudi, as it were? Well, I think that uh, Yusuf uh, Ali Al Idrisi, the number two guy, was one who had worked with the Americans quite a bit. I think they probably have more confidence in him. I think the American-Saudi partnership in the region probably will be less rocky than it was uh, when Badar was running the show. Even though he was ambassador mm. to the United States for 22 years and very close to the Bushes, he was no friend of the United States for the last three or four years. Yeah, fascinating. All right, uh, always a pleasure, Christopher Dickey, uh, for you on uh, what has been a very uh, significant story for not just this region, uh, but for relations between Saudi and the West, uh, the United States, and those around the world. Thank you, Chris.